So in the first part of this session, we went ahead and I showed you how to deploy the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5, and we did that. So now that vCenter Server is up and running, uh, we're now going to go to the actual appliance itself and go to the actual configuration of the appliance. Now, as you know, vCenter Server Appliance now is based on our Photon OS for the appliance in version 6.5. And we also have a different interface. As you see here, when you go to the traditional IP address uh, colon and then the port number 5480, which was that management port number that we would typically connect to the appliance, where we get this login, where it looks a little bit different than the way it used to. And it is different. And you're going to see, you're going to see, and at least in my opinion anyway, the appliance is much better for the managing the appliance anyway, and the interface that it's used as we log in here. You're going to see it looks much different than it used to. Comes into this summary section here on the left hand side is the navigation, obviously, and the right is everything that's presented. Under summary here, it gives us an overall health status of the machine, uh, last health check, CPU memory database. Everything's looking good and green, which is good. Right now, it's currently set up on single sign on domain of the vSphere.local, and that is running. There's no health messages available yet. With the VCSA 6.5, with this new version, we're now able to do a backup of the vCenter server directly from it rather than using such as our vSphere Data Protection or VDP appliance. Now, when we used VDP to back it up, uh, vCenter, because there's so much in it and so much to it, it used to take VDP a while to back up. And sometimes, frankly, it would just fail and it wouldn't work. I didn't always have the greatest experience with it. It wasn't horrible, but I did tend to sometimes fail. Now, with this internal backup and restore capability, this is a great new feature. Now, from here, you can also create your support bundle. You can reboot the appliance or you can shut it down. So it's working down here. We'll go to access. Uh, you see SSH login. I had enabled that uh, previously, as you remember. If I want to enable the bash shell, just click edit and click the enable bash shell. You can adjust the timeout here. We'll leave it at 60. So that's now on. Then we have networking. This is a nice screen to give you some networking statistics and monitoring. And then you can also go over to manage here. Now, this is great. This is one thing I really love about this appliance is that now for vCenter, it made it very simple to be able to go back and after the fact, change your DNS, gateway, any information like that. So now it is much easier to do that. And if you remember from previous versions, it was not always so simple to do that. So from here, you can just go ahead and select edit. And then you can change either the host name, the IP address, the DNS servers, the gateway, and so on. So awesome uh, improvement there as far as I'm concerned. Then when we come down to time, you can set the time zone, which you did when you deployed the appliance, but if you mess it up, you can go ahead and change it. Then also time synchronization, you can either do it based off of a time server such as NTP poll, or you can do it off of Google, or in this case here, because this is a, uh, we're just going to go ahead and do the VMware tools based time synchronization to match up with the host. And then update. This is definitely a nice feature with most of our newer type appliances. As you see here, we can go into settings. We can check to update automatically, say every day at 12 a.m. Use the default repository, click OK. That way it'll automatically check for updates. And then here, if you want to manually do it, we can just go check updates and then check repository. And as you see here, it says we have the latest updates already. So nothing to need to install. That's good. Then we go to administration. Here we can change the vCenter password, which also is a nice handy little tool to do. Now I'm going to, being this as a lab and everything else, root password expires, I'm going to say no. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. So that way my root password does not expire. As you see here, password expired successfully, the change. So here we have where we can redirect our vCenter server appliance uh, syslogs to another location. Now I do have the vRealize Log Insight 
appliance up and running. So I can go ahead and edit this. I'm going to select the log level where this asterisk is for everything, or you can select which ones you want to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in my log insight. I'm just going to, for right now, put on port 80 and TCP for the port, uh, for the protocol rather, and click OK. And there we go, that's done. And then we go to CPU and memory. Again, this is just to give you some graphs as far as performance. You can select the, uh, the time frame in which you're looking at, of course. And then a great feature here that we have is now where it can actually look at the vCenter server appliance database. So now we actually have a nice monitoring screen for the database itself. This will become very useful uh, to make sure that, for example, uh, being that I selected in it being a demo environment, the very small instance configuration for the install of it. That means the database is a little bit smaller. For some reason, my environment grew and I was at risk at possibly filling up the vCenter server appliance database. This is a great place where it will be able to show me as far as how we're doing from size and if there's any performance problems with that. Also, because I have log insight and also uh, vRealize operations, I can definitely use this to my advantage to where it will go ahead and it will alert me as to when my database gets to a high percentage level. So that is a great feature set. Now let's go back to the summary because one more thing I wanted to do and show you here was was to do a backup of the vCenter server appliance that I told you about, which again is a, so as you see, you can, to do your backup, you can select different protocols in which to, to communicate with as far as sending your backup. I'm just gonna do FTP for being that this is just a test environment. You put the path in here, uh, it's IP slash share folder name slash subfolder name. So make sure you do have a subfolder underneath that main shared folder on your device. Otherwise, uh, it won't work. So again, make sure you do that. Since I'm using FTP, it's going to be port 21. And then I also need to put in a username and password for the destination device that I'm sending the backup to. I also decided to encrypt the data backup, which is a good idea. That way somebody can't just randomly restore a backup of feeds on a server when you don't want them to. So now we're going to go ahead and do the backup. Click Next. It's going to validate all of your information that you've entered in. And then here we're going to select the parts of the backup. Of course, you can select the common, which is inventory and configuration, as well as your stats, events, alarms, and tasks. So um, I would recommend, of course, doing both of them. Not a bad idea unless you are uh, doing backups uh, separately of just the configuration and the alarms and stuff. So then you can just click Next. Now look, we got 500 meg and uh, 37 meg. So here we're ready to go ahead and do it. So we'll click finish. It will start the backup. And as you see, the backup process has started. Now the great thing about this, you, instead of uh, using VDP to back this up and doing this internally within the appliance itself, is as you can see, it's actually backing up much quicker than uh, VDP could ever back up a vCenter server in the past. Now keep in mind this is a new vCenter server. There's not a ton of VMs in here or a ton of data, but still, even for um, the lack of number of VMs and data associated, as you see, it's moving right along very quickly. Uh, VDP would not have been able to back this up so soon. So to me, this is just one another great feature of having this built-in backup capability. And of course, from a restore perspective, it will be quicker to do the restore as well. Definitely some awesome improvements within the vCenter server appliance with the new appliance and this backup capability. And there we go. It successfully finished the backup. Now, one thing to also let you know um, that's important is, fortunately, it does not overwrite the files in that folder. So if you're backing up, again, 
when you've already backed up files to that folder, you will need to create uh, a new folder for that in that path, that subfolder. What I would probably do is um, start doing it with a date associated for the folder name or something to that effect. So just keep in mind that it does not overwrite. You will need to create a new folder because otherwise uh, it will give you an error if you do try to use that same folder and there's already backup files in there. So that's it for the vCenter Server Appliance. So showing you the backup capability, which is new to vCenter Server Appliance 6.5. Now for doing the restore, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the files and the ISO image of the vCenter server. We're gonna click on the install exe file, and then it's gonna bring up this window here. And this is how we do a restore of the vCenter server appliance 6.5. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to select restore. And then next, of course, you're going to accept the EULA agreement. Click next. Then here we're going to put in basically the same information that we did. And so we're going to click next. And here it just gives you some review of the backup information. Click next. So here we're going to put in either the FQDN or the IP address of the particular host that we're going to redeploy the vCenter, service, vCenter server on. You're going to put in the appropriate username and password. Click next. You get a certificate warning, of course, you're going to click yes. So here we're going to put in our VM name as well as our root password and click next. And then we're going to pick what storage we want to put that onto and click next. And I usually like to enable thin disk mode, click next. You're going to select the appropriate network. You're going to assign the IP, which it already fills it in from what it had previously. And click Next. Now, as you see, I got this error here. The reason why is because I'm restore using the restore point they did in my vCenter server. Now, I'm not actually going to do next and complete the restore of the vCenter server. So it came up and it saw that the, the name, uh, the system name vCenter.eaglesclaw.net was already there and already valid one. So that's why it gave me that error. So I'm just going to stop here because basically I click next. It'd give you a review of all your settings that you made and you'd click basically restore and that would restore your vCenter server from that backup that you did. So I just wanted to go through and show you the process from connecting to the appliance, doing the actual backup, and then relaunching the install exe to go into that initial pop-up window here that we have and where you click restore to actually do the restore. So that shows you how to run a backup of the vCenter server appliance version 6.5, as well as how to restore the appliance from one of your backups. Hopefully this information was useful, and I look forward to seeing you again on some of my future enablement sessions. Thank you.